Hi friends and fellow flute enthusiasts, thanks for tuning in to Johnny's Flute Reviews. I'm Johnny Lippard and since 2002 I've dedicated myself to everything flute. I teach, perform, and record full time with the Native American flute. I post videos here on YouTube covering flute tips, tutorials, original songs, and cover songs to showcase how versatile the Native American flute is. If you're new here and interested in becoming a more emotive flute player, or you just love listening to the sounds of the Native American flute, be sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you're notified every time a new video drops. Now, let's dive into a flute from my personal collection. Welcome back. In this episode of Johnny's Flute Reviews, we're gonna look at a very, very special flute. Um, this is a replica of my very first flute. Now, my journey with the Native American flute started in 2002, Christmas Day 2002, as a matter of fact. Um, I first heard the Native American flute when I was 13 years old, flipping through cartoon channels, and found myself on this cartoon with a character playing a brown, end-blown flute. Looks like this one. And it was unlike anything else I'd ever heard. It was haunting, it was soulful, and it felt like it was just calling to me. And I'd never heard anything like this before. I had heard regular flute, I had heard saxophone, trumpet, I'd heard these other wind instruments, I knew what they sounded like. This was different. And those of you that have heard this calling uh, of the Native American flute, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And for me, it was, um, it was just, it was amazing. It was so cool. And so the internet was very, very early. Uh, this was back in 2002. The internet really hadn't figured out what it was going to be, uh, the potential of it yet. Um, social media did not exist. There were very, very few resources at the time for Native American flutes. Now we live in an age where we have Facebook groups, we have um, tons of websites for information, uh, tons of flute makers and flute players. So really we've advanced um, and really gotten um, a lot of information out there about the Native American flute. So back in 2002, uh, there was this one website that I came across that had an index, a listing of flute makers. And uh, I think it was called Bearded Wolf. Um, and I would go to that website to see you know, flute makers. And in my journey with coming across the Native American flute, um, I had showed my mom, of course, these flutes that were, you know, four, five, six hundred dollars at the time. Uh, even three hundred dollars was a lot to spend on a Native American flute, especially for a 13-year-old. Um, I had taken piano lessons. They lasted two weeks. I had done soccer. You know how kids are. They just, they get involved in stuff and you're not sure if it's going to stick or not. So what level of investment are you willing to make? Um, and so I'd show her these expensive flutes. And um, it was kind of like, uh, no, I, I, don't, I don't think so. But um, I was bound and determined to find something a little bit more affordable. So I came across uh, Sun Reed Instruments, a uh, flute maker by the name of Zakiah Blackburn up in Vermont. Um, and he had listed on his website uh, bamboo, Native American flutes, and he had one in the key of G, around $50, $55. And I showed that to my mom and I was like, hey, look, this one's, you know, it's not as expensive as the other ones. And uh, she said, well, maybe. And so in my mind as a kid, that was like, oh yeah, definitely gonna happen. Well, this was about October uh, 2002. And on Christmas day, out came this triangular priority box and inside of it had my first flute. And in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that this was a replica of my first flute because I was 13. There were not a lot of resources about Native American flutes. There were not resources available on how to take care of your flute. I grew up in Florida, lived there uh, as I was growing up. It's humid, and, uh, it's a very humid uh, environment. And I kept my flute, I've got a lot of stories to share around this, but I kept my flute in a closet in the bathroom in Florida where it's humid. and mildew grows naturally. And so unfortunately, unfortunately, 
my very first flute died a miserable death and I was heartbroken. So a couple years ago, I um, decided as a gift for me to honor where I started with a Native American flute, I bought myself an exact replica. Now this flute is in the key of G minor. It's what we know as a, a mid G flute. It's only five holes. I started with a five hole flute because I was told it was easier. And in fact it is. And if you're starting out with a flute and you prefer a five hole or you've got a six hole flute, you just use a strap on it. That's cool too. Um, but interesting enough, this mouthpiece on this one is wide open. It's just like the other end. And I didn't know it at the time. I thought this is how all flutes were, but this is not my preference today. When I was starting with the flute, it was okay because I didn't mind, I adapted to it. Um, so anyway, um, I remember getting my first flute and just playing uh, little noises, little sounds. And eventually I'll tell you the story about how I came over or I overcame social anxiety because of the Native American flute. Um, that's to come, that story's to come. I've got some exciting things to share with that. But anyway, um, I wanna demonstrate for you today um, this flute made by Zakiah Blackburn of Sun Reed Instruments. Here we go. It's a little, it's more windy and breathy than what I prefer, but here's the thing. Not every flute of mine is gonna be used in a concert. There are certain recording projects where the voice of a flute, and I tell my students in private lessons and in workshops as we do different techniques and we do different scales and we're hitting different notes with the flute, the flute is the boss. The flute will tell you what it can do. The flute will allow certain things and not other things. And what happens is we grow a preference around this um, and we also become better flute, uh, flute players because we are responsible and we are responding and uh, we are responding to different things that the flute is doing and allowing us to do. So this one has a lot of back pressure, more than what I would prefer. It's a little more breathy than what I would prefer. But for starting out, this will always be a very special flute for me. And the difference between, there's a lot of differences between then and now, but one of the biggest things is taking care of my flute. I know now what to do and what not to do with your flute. So um, anyway, um, there's a link to Sunread Instruments below in the description. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, this is a very special flute for me. This is where I started with the flute. So um, thank you, Zakiah, for um, fulfilling that order. Uh, back in 2002 and this one a couple of years ago, uh, you make my heart sing. And um, if you're looking to become a more emotive flute player, um, be sure to check out some of the uh, links in the description below for resources uh, that'll help you along your flute journey. Be sure you subscribe and stick with us here. There are many more flute reviews to come, original songs, cover songs, flute tips and tutorials. Thank you so much for listening to this story and uh, I hope to see you next time.